We are now 16 episodes deep into Mushoku Tensei Season 2, and I think some people are upset that nothing is really happening. A lot of things are happening, but it's definitely not the Mushoku Tensei that people were kind of expecting from like Season 1, right? A lot of setup, a lot of yapping, a lot of preparation so that when turning point three happens we're all just gonna be like holy shit and what is the preparation uh we got married we got a house everything is happier than ever rudy has a list of things that he wants to do dirty to sophie but that's kind of skipped in mushoku tensei the anime what else happened uh some kind of doll stuff with you know zanoba and cliff which led into us learning more about how transportation circles might work teleportation stuff right but nana was nana was mind break but so far everything's looking pretty good our deadbeat dad paul he's not deadbeat he did send the kids over so we have norn and aisha and ruizer to meet with and i'm sure it's just gonna be another episode such a wholesome happy episode where rudy feels like oh this is just Fulfillment. I feel so good in life. Surely nothing will go wrong. And then we just go yoink and we do then the fucking turning point, but that's not yet until I don't know how many episodes in. Anyways, let's watch today's episode. One season. It's been 15 episodes since we've seen Ruizard, right? Well, more than that. Ruizard disappeared somewhere on like episode 22, 21. I don't know. Yeah, he's very trustworthy. It's kind of crazy, huh? That despair that everyone is so scared of, right? Is the man that we can trust the most. And we've seen what he really is. You know, the whole stereotype of spared. We're trying to, like, remove that by spreading around figurines and doing good deeds. I wonder how many more figurines he's been kind of just, like, sending off. I already said bald last episode. Whenever I see some character and I call him bald once, then that's pretty much it. And then if I see them again, eh. Jungles. Which one is Ginger? She. Ginger is returning to her prince. Ginger? Have we ever seen this Ginger girl? Maybe I forgot back in like season one. And that's why last episode, when we were reading Paul's letter, Sophie was looking very shocked, but we couldn't see the perspective of who, uh, sorry, Roxy. Roxy was looking very shocked because Roxy couldn't see the perspective of who was they were talking about. The better sister. See? Aisha is so smart. Aisha suggested that we join caravans as guards. We got here faster, bro. Come. This entire, listen. You got, you, yeah. Mushoku Tensei freaks are all gonna get mad no matter what. I'm gonna basically, you find Aisha fucking annoying? I think Aisha's better. I think Norn is fucking annoying. This bitch is fucking useless. All she does is fucking cry and yell and fucking cry and moan and bitch about everything. Aisha is competent. She's so smart. She's so intelligent. She knows proper mannerism. She's cunning enough to make her own decisions. She is fucking great. Norn, L sister, boo. L sister, Aisha is my favorite child. I will shit on Norn every chance I get. That's right, El Norn. We should talk about Eris. Is is the, is the topic of Eris ever gonna get brought up? Because like you know, it's like we used to travel together. <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> I don't think she hates him either. My understanding of why Eris left Rudy is because Eris, after the encounter with Orsted, made her realize how weak she is. She realized that shit's going down, with her family's entirely dead. So she decided she needs to get stronger. That's why she decided to leave Rudy after that. I think that is my understanding. But Eris leaving after that one night stand probably doesn't really help Rudy in that sense. He probably doesn't. Understand why, right? Well matched. Well matched, because you're like distant cousins. Well matched in terms of power. That Rudy is already pretty strong, but Eris feels like she's not. Therefore, she had to leave and get stronger. Is that kind of the understanding there? Yeah, that's right. But when the red-haired girl comes back, Will Rudy fold and just like simp for Eris again and kind of like have Sylvie in the backseat? 
I don't know. We were talking about like the potential of a concubine being introduced because apparently Sylphie and elves, it's hard to conceive babies. So I'm just gonna assume when Eris shows back, bro is just gonna completely fold and then whatever he's saying here, it just doesn't matter? I don't know. You're not gonna hang out here for a while? Okay. Dude, you can stay, bro. And Eris never says she's coming back. Okay. Ruija's advice. If we ever see her, we gotta be calm and talk it out. But I feel like someone as hot-headed as Eris, and someone as dramatic as Rudy, they're not gonna be able to keep calm and just talk it out, can they? <laughs> Ruija is just acting as like a middleman, not like a messenger. <laughs> okay. Wow, wake him up beside my lovely elf wife. Everything is so happy. Who's making that noise? Aisha, Norn. Bodyguard! The demons and the spirits, yo! It's not a good look, cause like... Lore-wise, the story of the spear, the cursed spears, comes from the Laplace basically tricking in this race, so... There's some tension here, right? Bodyguard, chill. Rouge, chill. Or friends, chill! <laughs> This is pretty menacing, man. What? They must have talked over and then body guy is fine. I don't know. Do they have personal beef? They personally know each other? Yeah, I know the Laplace War, right? And I know how the the, 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 the spears were basically cursed and kind of tricked the entire spirit race. But like, personally, does Richard have anything with body guy? I kind of want to see you fight him. I want to see a serious fight. I don't need him to die, but... Yeah. Bro's leaving without breakfast? Maybe we can say, at least stay till lunch. And then he'll be like, at least stay till dinner. And then we'll basically just like trick him into staying here forever. Happy family. Bro, you just showed up last episode at the end. How are you gonna leave immediately? Oh. Aww, Aisha. Aww, see? Even to Rujard, Aisha is the best girl, right? The preferred daughter. Now, where's Norn? Norn, you gonna say something? Yeah. Leave! Fucking take Norn and fucking leave. See, I care. All I care about is Aisha. <laughs> Fuck Norn. I don't know why I'm being so mean to Norn. I don't know why. I just basically... <laughs> I'm coming into this as Aisha is the favorite child because she's so competent. <laughs> and Norn is probably, you know, the more normal one, right? She's got nothing really special going on. <laughs> so that's why I'm just like shitting on her for no reason. <laughs> Even Ruizier don't want Norn, bro. Nah. I ain't tired. I'm fucking tired of your bullshit. Norn, fucking had to fucking take you all the way here. You're so annoying. Go away. Stick with Rudy. I like you though, Aisha. Oh my god, what the fuck? What the fuck? And the woman with Tim isn't the same as last time. Norn, yo, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. So you fucking kid, man. <laughs> Sylphie. Okay. So, I wonder how Norn and Sylphie is gonna... Their relationship will be. I thought he was gonna stick around for like an episode or two, but... It is what it is. He's on his grind to, you know, do more good things and spread the positive reputation for spirits, so... Goodbye again, Ruizard. Until... Season 3? Season 4? Fuck if I know. Yes, let's all get along. <laughs> Whoa, uh, money, gold, treasures, great. More letters? 
<laughs> School has nothing left to teach me. Giga Chad Aisha. Aisha's too fucking smart for the school, bro. Aisha just wants a fucking full time job already as a fucking maid. Oh, that's from oh the episode. Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, when we met Zanaba, I think, right? During that arc, Aisha was also involved. I think at that point, some gift was exchanged. Was it Roxy's, um, the sacred shrine, the sacred gift, right? The Roxy's panties was exchanged along with this thing, right? I think. Take the University of Magic and Yo, is Norn also gonna take the fucking exam with, with like, uh, Norn and Aisha? Aisha probably gets, like, super high scores. She's like, oh my god, we've never seen a prodigy of this level! And then Norn's like, you fail. Does Aisha even use magic? They're still young. So they could develop their mana at a really young age. Okay. Can she even read? Our brother. <laughs> Don't think anyone that can say. <laughs> Wait, what, what? You said that you're probably gonna fail. So I kind of gave a little reassurance. But then you're like, then I don't want to take it. Because you fucking suck. What? Uh, what? Wait, I... This... What do you want me to do? That's right, I should talk your shit. Skill issue. Fuck you, Norn. Fuck you. What? What? You, you, you want me to just let you fail? And then I'm trying to help you with some money? And you get mad because you don't incompetence? You want me to fucking work around that? I should get after her. Agreed. And that's the best part about Aisha. She's a child, but she's pretty much a grown-up, bro. Bullying is very important. You can't let these fucking annoying, insecure, fucking entitled children walk all over you. You gotta fucking bully them! Let them fucking know where they stand! Fuck you too, Rudy! I'll do that instead! I will do that at every point in this season, I don't care! I'm the biggest Norn hater right now! That's right, she ain't even trying! Skill issue. That's right, I have beef with the fictional fucking 10 year old kid. I don't even know how old Norn is, but I'm a fucking beef with her. I, this is personal now. Every episode, if I get an opportunity, if there is something that Norn is doing annoying, I will fucking pop off on this child because I can, but I can't in real life. Give Aisha a full time job. Are we? Are we responsible? Would school even teach Aisha anything? I mean, she says that she said that like, nothing can teach her, but I think she's like, getting a little too cocky. Like, it's, this is a magical university that she could enroll, right? I'm sure there's stuff that she could learn here. 100% she could. And Julie might get even new friends too. I do agree on that. I think Aisha will be fine no matter what she does. She's just too smart. She's just too independent. Yeah, let Aisha just do whatever she wants. She'll be great. We gotta worry about Norn. Yeah, <laughs> almost like she is Fitz. <laughs> Maybe Sophie and Norn, they'll kind of like get together and Norn will become better because of Sophie. Will Rudy do anything? At some point, we have to like... Norn and Rudy has to have a heart and heart talk, right? There, there's some misunderstandings going on that she's not aware of. When that talk comes, I will still be a Norn hater, I think. I will I, some people are saying, I'm going to cry. There's going to be a moment when Norn does some shit and I'm going to cry. I'm not going to cry. You think I'm going to cry with this fucking baby-ass fucking 2D cartoon, bro? I ain't fucking crying. I don't know much about little girls. Says the guy that skipped their parents' fucking funeral to play a visual novel about... Didn't he do something? Isn't that straight up from the fucking light novel passage? He straight up did the most degenerate shit back in the day, right? What? Huh? This is a fucking lie. Don't know much about little girls my ass, bro. Alright, great teamwork. Wife and husband, great teamwork. 100% bro. Do whatever you want. Aisha, you're perfect. Do whatever you want. What's your mark? Let's see the report card, Norn. Come on, let's see it. 
ノルンはどこの学科に入りたい面白い授業があるから何かやりたいことを探すのはどうだ例えば Get the fuck out of my house! Go live in the fucking dorm by yourself! Pay your own tuition, god damn you! 寮暮らしかダメだよお父さんはお兄ちゃんと一緒に暮らせ Dorm living could be good to have her form her own independence though it could be a good life experience if she can handle herself. If she wants to try it, kick her out of the house. Surely nothing will go wrong. Because she deserves a special treatment because she requires all the resources because she is the ill child here. But it's also not fair that you're so much better than her either. That's why she deserves all this extra resources. It's life, Aisha. I'm sorry. It sucks, I know. You're just too good. Oh no! No! No, no! Mom, I mean. No, no, it's nothing about that. Nothing to do with the fact that Paul fucked up me. <laughs> no, Norm gets special treatment because she is literally special. And Aisha, you're too competent. You're scary, actually, about how independent and good you are. That's why we need to allocate all the fucking resources to Norm so that she can try to fucking keep up. Hey, who told you that, actually? Zenith! No, no, wait, wait, no, 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 not Zenith. Norn's grandma. Norn's grandma. Do we know grandma? Have we ever met Paul's mom? I don't think I remember. We've never met the grandmothers, right? I only know Paul and Zenith, but I don't know the lineage before that. Yeah. Either Zenith mom or Paul's, like, we've never seen them. Interesting. Grandma exists. Okay. No, 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 no. I like you better. I like you way better. No, no. Oh, poor Aisha. I mean, she is a concubine, right? Look at this bitch. Look, 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 look at this bitch. Look at this spoiled ass fucking bitch, dude. Not even a single tear. No, no emotion, bro. Sees her fucking sister, pour her heart out, expressing her insecurity that's been eating her up alive because of something Paul fucking did. You think I should ask for this? Nah. And she's still doing so fucking well. And then you got this bitch fucking sitting here. Oh, I'm gonna go to the fucking dorm. Who do you think fucking paying for that? I am! And you just said solving shit with money is bad. Fuck you! Great. I love yelling at children, man. I bet Norn's not even awake right now, bro. And I should already did all this. Be gone! <laughs> She ain't listening. Is she even gonna be able to make friends? I don't think she's ever gonna reach out to Rudy for help. Maybe Sophie. Okay. I, I that's not up to her. What do you mean don't catch cold? Once every 10 days. Is she, I, if I was Norn, I would probably never visit home. I straight up wouldn't. I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not even listening to you right now. Like, get me the fuck out of here is what I'm thinking if I'm Norn. <laughs> Why? Every 10 days? No, I'm trying to be emancipated from you. I get, get, me, get me the fuck away. Hmm. wonder how she feels about that line. Because I worry. And that's genuine from Rudy. But does Norn understand that? Maybe a little bit? Maybe not enough. Her prejudice on season one and how Rudy fucked up Paul, which was deserved, probably still hindering her mind. And it's a child that is not developed as Aisha. But she probably doesn't really know, but she kind of has some feelings that Rudy does care. And it's just that lingering connection that needs to make when Rudy and Norm will have some kind of inevitable heart-to-heart, -heart, right? That's what'll connect it. But until then, we're going to have a lot of fun just shitting on her. Will Norn and Julie become friends? Oh, there she is. No friends. Loner. Loser. I'm so mean. I'm so fucking mean. Okay, one month time skip. Not a single friend. What the fuck do these beast girls have in the bag? 
some kind of gift. It took them a month. Wait, what is this? A whole month to get ready. <sighs> what did they do? Did they collect a whole month of like period blood and like put it on like a fucking like some kind of cloth to like put it in the fucking shrine? Like this is gonna be something fucking degenerate, bro. One hundred percent, something in here is gonna be degenerate. <laughs> Soft. Food? What's up, Luke? Luke, you look into it. What is it? What? What's that look? What? 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 What, what do we do? What? 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 Looks like we're a criminal. New students in the girls' dormitory. Has Lydia and Persona been going around for a month stealing new girls' panties in this bag? For Boss? Because they know that Boss has Roxy's panties in the shrine? And if so, does that mean Norn's panties are also in here? Does that mean that Norn's gonna think oh, this is gonna be another thing of misunderstanding and you're like, Oh my god, you perfect, you stole my pants! I don't know. It, the the distress seems to be confined to only small breasted girls with pretty faces. So, wait, 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 wait. So, big titty girls, nah, we don't like them. But only small titty girls with pretty, pretty. Because <laughs> of, I guess, yeah, they're basing the, the beauty standards on Sophie. Because Linny and Persona probably sees Sophie and is like, okay, that's boss's type. Flat girl, pretty face. So they've been going around first girls that, first year girls that look like this. And what have they been stealing? Oh no, no! Oh no! It's in the bag, bro. Mm? That's all the panties. So it is a bag of panties of freshman girls that have small titties, pretty face. Meaning, Norn is probably in there. And when Norn figures out that Onisama has her panties, how is this gonna go? What's in there, bro? Open it. Open it. It's, Rudy didn't do this. The boss will love this. The Beast Girls did this. It's not our fault. We never asked them. No, no, it's not Rudy. It's looking bad for us, though. That's right, we're set up. We're framed, bro. Haven't opened it. No, no orders. I don't know, you're kind of degenerate. And Paul, you know, does that shit too, maybe. Do you really? Does Sophie believe in us? Okay, Sophie does. <laughs> oh no, I can't satisfy my husband. So he's been going around stealing first year girls' panties. <laughs> Why would you say that out loud? Why would you say that out loud? Such passionate nights. How do you know? You... Sophie's literally been telling Princess, like, you've been getting just boned every night, and there's like a fucking list of things that Rudy wants to do to her. Does she know the list? The list that's never been mentioned in the anime, but apparently the light novel. It's like a fucking list of different acts that Rudy even wants to do with Sophie, right? So it's like... And, and that's another thing about the Nanahoshi thing, right? So a YouTube comment said, Yo, Sophie moans extra loudly whenever Nanahoshi is at home because of the jealousy. But apparently that is actually fake news. This is fake news that's actually never true and was actually being spread almost like a Mandela effect from the light novel community. Now, I never read the light novel. I'm just based on whatever random comments I read on YouTube. And surely... People online wouldn't lie, right? So I, I don't really know. I don't know. I'm hearing both sides of the story. Fake news, real story. Okay, what's the real meeting? What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, to the pair of them? What about the pair of panties in your fucking bag right now? And how, what are we going to do with the pair of panties? What are we going to do? Is, is Linnea and Persona going to go around all the fucking girls? And, is this your panty? Here, fucking take your panty back. Like, how are we going to return the panties back to the girls? Get out the fucking And Norris is in there too. And Rudy doesn't have to do anything, right? Princess will handle this, right? Oof. Yeah, blame Linnea and Persona. We did not do this. Oh, there's Norn! Ignored. 
この学校の生徒会長を務めておりますロロクレイトロロロブラッシュトゥアリオルあつらいシスターあの第三実習室かどこかわからないスキルイッシュリードファッキンマップアンキリンはいこっちだ And Luke is family now, yeah, because he's Grey Rat. Well, all the Grey Rats are family, but they're kind of like distant cousins. But Luke and Norn, you know, Grey Rat. Luke is the real big bro now, <laughs> not Rudy. <laughs> what, did you, what did you think was gonna happen? What? They don't think, they're beast. Oh, it's Norn again. Wait, wait, Norn's gonna not eavesdrop here, right? <laughs> Lydia wants some smoke? Get the fuck out of here! What are you listening to? <laughs> Yo, fighter. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, go fighter! <laughs> go fuck her up right now! <laughs> what are Mew doing? Nani? I'm gonna show who the top top It's the big boss's sister. <laughs> These beast girls have no fucking intelligence. They just fold immediately. <laughs> You fucking talking shit, I'm gonna correct you. Oh, I actually like them defiant. They're funny as fuck to me, man. Careful now. It'll take some time, definitely, to get more uh, suited with Norn. It's gonna take a long time. Is Norn skipping school? Damn. She going through it, huh? Honestly, I can honestly relate to something like this too, right? Like when I went to university for the first time, like the environment completely changed. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like sometimes I would skip school too and just like be bedridden like this, you know? And that's the episode. Listen, it's a fucking fictional character. There's no need for you to get all angry and say, how dare you fucking say all these mean things to Nord? Nord's just a little child. I know, it's a fictional child though. I'm, I'm gonna continue hating on her. If you don't like that, get the fuck out of here. I think it's hilarious. But what is the point of today's episode? Ruger showed up with the kids, but Ruger's almost already gone. He's hustling. He's got all his shit to do, right? You know, basically spreading the good representation of spares. So he's busy. So it kind of sucks that he's already left. But hey, he said that he's going to be back. Now, there's some very interesting thing with Bodyguardy and Ruger. And we know with the Laplace War, right? The cursed spears, the shit that we learned, the truth about the spares, right? And how Laplace tricked them. And I know that this is not Laplace, but this is the Demon King, you know, Bodyguardy. So I wonder if there's something beyond just, you know, spirits and the demons like that. Or if there's something personal with Ruger and Bodyguardy, if they actually met in the past. I don't know. That's something that will probably be explained in Annie's video about cut content. But very interesting there that someone like Ruger also was fucking sweating. Because let's get real, Bodyguardy is a fucking Demon King, bro. Aside from that, we have two kids. We got Aisha, the child prodigy who can do no wrong. And then you have Norn, who is just the most realistic depiction of a child her age. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's not the smartest. She's not talented. And she has a lot of, you know, insecurities with Rudy and the shit that she saw in episode season one. And it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. I am not denying Norn's depiction as a character about how unrealistic it is. I think that Aisha is very unrealistic, right? Aisha is just fucking cracked. She's so smart. She is basically a fully functioning adult by the age of whenever she, she came out the womb as a fucking fully functioning adult, right? She's not realistic. I love her. She's great. But Norn obviously needs a lot more support. So Aisha even getting upset here, bro. The fact that grandma told her like... The grandma, I think it was, I forget whose mom it was. Maybe it was Zenith's mom, but Paul's mom. But one of the grandmas basically told, you know, Aisha, it's like, you the daughter of a whore. I wonder if the grandma said that. Now, Lilia probably didn't say it like that, right? Concubine, I'm not sure the exact definition of a concubine, but concubine basically means uh, a person that is not the official wife, but can bear offsprings with the man, I think. And that's kind of what Lilia was, right? And if Lilia is not a concubine, then what really is she? She gave the birth of Aisha with Paul's seed, and they're not married. So doesn't it kind of make sense that it is a concubine? Maybe there's like a negative stigma with the word concubine, and a different word is actually better. I don't know. It's kind of really sad to see Aisha's insecurities with that too. Norn, on the other hand, she's basically just kicked off to the dorm. And even in the dorm, she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. How could she, right? She's... She just... She just mid. And there's nothing wrong with being mid. It's just that everything she does is a little bit annoying. For the vast majority, I'm going to assume that about 99% of people are 
gonna love Aisha more than Norn. And if you enjoy Norn more than Aisha, I think that says a lot about you as a person. And there's nothing wrong with that. These are fictional characters. Who gives a fuck about the opinions of fictional characters? But I think that if you're going out of your way to like protect Norn after all you've seen, there is some personal drama, some personal, you know, rooted, you know, insecurities that you're really projecting because I think you give 99, like you give a thousand people, Norn and Aisha. Everybody's gonna pick Aisha. But the people that stick with Norn, you're a fucking different breed. But you know what? I can respect that. I can respect that. And that's it from me. If you're still here, if you didn't enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.